In this video, I want to talk about network namespaces. But before we dive into network namespaces, let us quickly recap what a PID namespace is because it helps set the context for this discussion. As we saw in an earlier video, a PID namespace is a mechanism provided by the kernel that helps us isolate individual applications running on the same host, giving each of these applications the illusion that it is the only one running on that host. For example, here, application one has no idea about the other three applications, even though all the four applications are running on the same physical host. Now, with network namespaces, what we can do is give each of these applications their own networking resources. That is, with network namespaces, we are isolating network resources such that those resources are available only to those individual applications. But what exactly do I mean by networking resources? While that list is an exhaustive one, there are three key resources that matter in the world of network namespaces. Let us take a look. The first one is the set of network devices, such as the Ethernet device and the loopback device. The second one is what we call the IP tables. It is a resource, it is a mechanism provided by the kernel that allows us to set rules that would determine what packets can come in through the network into the host and what packets can go out of the host into the network. Essentially, IP tables is what helps us to set up a firewall for our host. And finally, we have the routing table which again is a set of rules that helps determine where a particular network packet needs to go next before it can get to its destination. So given these networking resources, the way we can leverage network namespaces is on a given host, we have the default namespace. That is the one that we see when we log into a system. And that has its own set of networking resources. Now, let us say we want to isolate an application using PID namespace and also give that application its own networking capabilities. For example, your application may not need to access the internet maybe for security reasons, and you want to control that. So what you can do is run that application inside of a namespace and give that application its own networking resources. So by doing this, what you can do is control the networking capabilities available for your containerized application. What I would like to do next is quickly go to our machine and show you what these three resources look like and what commands you can use on a Linux system to see these resources. So let's go take a look. Before we look into these networking resources, one thing I do want to emphasize is that getting into the details of each of these networking resources is an exhaustive topic and they deserve their own videos and they are not needed for the discussion of network namespaces. So what we are going to focus on here is how do we isolate these networking resources within a namespace? And as needed, we will go into a little bit more detail for some of these networking resources. So what I'm going to demonstrate here is first, outside of a namespace, what we are going to see 
for the three networking resources. And then we will create a namespace and see what that looks like. So first, in the top window for the host, I'm going to take a look at what network devices this host system has. For that, the command I use is the IP command, followed by link, the list of network links that I want to see. And I say a list. And what you can see here is it gives us four network devices available on this host. The first one is the loopback device. It is not a physical device. It is a virtual interface that the kernel gives us to enable communication between different services that are all running on the same host. And then you have this Ethernet device. And then you have a couple of other Docker devices. And again, as I said, the details of the devices themselves does not matter. And the second one is we want to see what kind of rules we have in our IP tables. And for that, you need to be sudo. And the command is IP tables. And I say, list all the rules on this host. Again, the details of the table itself does not matter. What we see here is a set of rules that determine what packets come into the system and what packets get dropped. And finally, using the IP command, we can see the entries for the routing table on the host. You can just say R, short for routes, and you can see a table that basically tells you for a given destination, where do you need to go next on this host? So we've seen three resources, the network devices, the IP tables, that is a set of rules, that determines what packets come in, what packets go out, what packets get dropped, and then the routing table itself. Now, let us go to the other window and let us create an isolated environment, that is a namespace, and then run these same commands and see what resources, what networking resources are available within a namespace. So, sudo unshare is the command to create any namespace and then as a list of options you specify what types of namespaces you want to create because we want to isolate the application itself we start with the pid namespace and we also want to give these applications their own networking resources so we want a network namespace and then we want to fork a process Mount proc, do not worry about this option if you haven't seen this yet. And then go ahead and create a bash shell in the new environment. Okay, so we are inside of a namespace now. So what I'm going to do now is do the same thing. IP, link, list. So as you can see, you only get one device as opposed to the four that we saw in the host namespace, in the root namespace. We only get the loopback device. That is the first one. The second one, IP tables, dash dash, list rules. And remember, I did not use the sudo command here for IP tables because I'm already root in this namespace. And see again, the output of the IP tables, the set of rules it spits out. It is very different from what we saw in the root namespace. So that is the second one, which means this environment has its own set of rules, some default rules that you can customize for this application you're going to run within this namespace. And then finally, using the IP command, show me the routing table and look at it. It says that Oops, sorry, I don't have a routing table that exists in, within this namespace, which means that for any application that we are going to run within this namespace, if we want 
to provide it with any networking capability, we have to set up the routing table depending on the needs of the application. So again, what I just demonstrated here is how we can isolate networking capabilities available to an application by using the namespace mechanism, specifically the network namespaces mechanism. So network namespaces allows us to do at least three things and these three critical things. What devices, what networking devices are available to the application running inside the container? What set of rules does it have to allow packets in and allow packets out? And then finally, what kind of routing table does it have that determines whether an application can even connect to the internet and what other services the application can reach, whether it is within the system or running on another system. So essentially you can control what networking capabilities my application running inside the container has. That is what Network Namespaces provides. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the concept of Network Namespaces. What I'm going to do in the next video is give you a demo of how we can customize these network resources within a namespace and allow the namespace to communicate with the host. See you then.